Hey guys, this is Shane here from Echo Soundworks. In this video, I'm gonna show you the best, the most efficient way to sequence your drums inside a Logic 10. All right, so I know the word best is subjective, right? But this technique, this workflow is one, incredibly efficient, two, integrates very, very well with Logic's just natural workflow, and three, it is a great way to have fun while you're creating drums, right? So there are two ways to sequence drums inside a Logic. The first way is to just use audio. You can chop up audio, or you can drag in individual one-shot samples like kicks and snares and hi-hats and order that, rearrange it in your range window to create a beat. The second way is to use MIDI to sequence or trigger those samples via MIDI using one of the plugins that come with Logic. But what I wanted to do was get something that worked natively with Logic's natural workflow and environment that use stock plugins. So let's dive into Logic and take a look at how we can do this. All right, so we're inside of a session in Logic that I'm currently working on. It's not a finished track, but it's gonna highlight this workflow process really well. So I'm not gonna keep you guys in suspense or in the dark any longer. In my opinion, the best way to sequence and program drums in Logic 10, if you're gonna stay stock, is using the Drum Machine Designer. More specifically, creating your own workflow that makes sense for you with the Drum Machine Designer. And all you have to do is create your own custom kit. So without further ado though, let's take a quick listen to this track. All right, so if you guys like the sounds you just heard in this track, you can actually download a lot of them for free, like these massive patches here, a couple of the basses, some of the drums. We released a free sample pack called Enigma. You can download it for free. Link is in the description. All right, so first things first, let's cover what Drum Machine Designer is, because it helps to have a good understanding of how it's set up and why it's set up so you can use it and leverage it in your own productions. So. I'm gonna pull in a new instance of the Drum Machine Designer to go over this. So we're gonna go new software instrument track. I'm going to navigate to my to my browser, my library rather, so was, which was already open. And you can do that by clicking this button here or hitting Y on your keyboard and then selecting electronic drum kit, drum machine designer. And we will choose, let's do trapdoor, double click. So what the drum machine designer is, is it's basically a grouped multi-output track stack <laughs> of UltraBeat that has a sexy front end interface. So UltraBeat is a plugin that's come with Logic for a long time. So here's our trapdoor drum machine designer. Now, right off the bat, it loads up all these plugins on the main group. I took all of these off. I wasn't gonna use these on most of my drum, drum channels, so I quickly customized it, and that's what I would suggest you do. So I took all these off and then put my own plugins I like to work with on you know, basically the my bus, my drum bus, which is just simple EQ, some compression, and maybe some saturation. All right, so from there, if you click on this main track with this drop-down arrow, you can access the Drum Machine Designer interface. It looks like this. Now, all this is doing is pointing towards a multi-output instance of UltraBeat that's in this track stack. So if I click this drop-down arrow and go to my first track, which is always gonna be a kick with all these presets, you can see that UltraBeat's there. And like I said, this, if we click on UltraBeat and scroll down, it's literally just a multi-output of UltraBeat. So all these other tracks correlate to samples and cells in both UltraBeat and the sexy skin. And if I click through these here, you can see that it moves to them, right? So if we go, here's the kick, rim, snare, etc. All right, so first up is drum, the Drum Machine Designer gives you the quickest route to create your own custom kits that make sense to you. What do I mean by that? Well, you can create a kit that's laid out however you like. I lay mine out the same way a machine kit is. So I'll show you how you can load up an empty kit and tweak it and then save it yourself. So go to track, new software instrument track, go to your library. You can also hit Y on your keyboard to hit that. We're gonna go to electronic drum kit, drum machine designer, and load up an empty kit. You can also load up a full kit if you wanna edit that instead, but I'll just, I'll load up an empty kit for now. So once we load up the empty kit, what I was just doing is getting rid of all of these plugins. You don't want these plugins probably, um, if you're like me, I like to work with a specific set of plugins when I'm mixing drums and they're not these plugins. I actually like to work with third-party plugins. Like uh, if we go to my actual drum designer here, patch I pulled up, we have the Cytomic, the glue compressor, and FabFilter Saturn on there as well. So here's the empty kit. Now what I can do is I can open up the Drum Machine Designer and I can start to order my kit however I want. And that's really all you have to do. You don't even have to drag samples in, right? Because dragging in a couple samples takes maybe a minute. 
So what do I mean by ordering it? Well, right now it goes C1, D1, C sharp one, D sharp one, and it's a little bit weird. So what I wanna do is I wanna order it chromatically, and then I kinda know and understand my layout. So I'm gonna go C, C sharp one, D, D sharp, and then we need to go to the second page to grab E. I have no idea why it's laid out like this, but you can just move it back, kinda like moving an app on an iPhone. So we're gonna put E right here. And now we have C, C sharp, D1, D sharp one, E1, and we need to pop F right here. And we're going to find F sharp, which seems to have gone to the second page. So we're gonna take the F sharp here, and I'm gonna pop it way up here. And so we want E, F, F sharp, G, G sharp, and so forth. So now I have it set up how I want, and I can literally just save it from here, right? I don't have to do anything else, because at any time I ever want to create a kit, in any genre, this is what I'm dragging the samples to, right? So to save it, you just pull it open, go back to your library and hit save, and you can name it whatever you'd like, and then it will always show up right here in your user patches. So let's look at how easy it is to build your custom kit, and then we'll compare that to the other alternatives in Logic. So I have my own little workflow here, so I'm gonna go and we're gonna take a uh, kick. So I'm just gonna pull in a kick at random, we're gonna pull a kick right there, kick right there, and now let's pull in a snare, do rim snare, rim snare here, short snare here, go back, go back, and we will grab a hi-hat, or a couple of hi-hats rather, close hi-hat, boom, boom. We're gonna go grab an open hi-hat now for the last remaining couple cells, open a hi-hat, open hi-hat. So literally, as I, it's a little slower because I'm talking, right? That takes 30 seconds. And now I have. Now I have my kit and I am ready to go. Now the volumes might be a little bit loud by default and you can turn that down by actually turning down the volume on the actual, on the actual cell here, or you can turn it down on the actual grouped track itself. It's up to you. But like I said, that is way quicker than creating a kit in the EXS24. And for those of you who aren't familiar with that process, I will show you real quick how, how awful that is actually. All right, so if you wanted to create a custom kit inside of the EXS24, you'd have to go to edit, then you'd have to create a couple different groups, right? And you'd have to drag and drop your different samples into zones and then group them how you want. So for instance, the slow part is if you drag one in, that's not slow, you have a kick. But it, spans it across the whole keyboard. So then you have to choose what key it starts on, what key it ends on. And so for instance, I'd have to go, let's say I wanted to start at C2 and end at C2. We'll do uh, C2, C2, right? And then I'd have to drag, you know, go back, drag another snare or drag another sample in. So we'll drag this here. And then we would want this to be uh, C sharp two to C sharp two, right? And this just takes a long ass time and it's not very, it's, it's just, it's not the easiest way to do it. So that's what makes the drum machine designer more efficient is that you can quickly create your own custom kit and recall anytime you want and you're off and running in a much, much shorter amount of time. All right, so the next reason that I love using the drum machine designer is it's tight integration with logic. So you cannot find this, what I'm about to show you with any third party or any other plugin inside of logic. Check us out. So. If you guys are, you know, like me and you load up a kit and you kind of want to play around with the kit to come up with something cool, right? So with this kit, for instance, I can play all my samples at once, right? And kind of come up with an idea that I like. Now, if I wanted to, I, record, I could record that all on one track, right? I could record it all on this top track, this top level, the entire stack. And I'll do that right now so you can see how that works. Right, so now all of the samples are in one MIDI file and I can just quantize these and we can listen. can control my snare right here, even though it's not on that track. That's because it's a multi-output. Now, what I wanted to show you is this, and it might not show up for you by default, so you might have to go to view, 
and then show drum names. But how cool is this? We can see the drum names right here in the actual piano roll. That's huge, especially if you're using a kit with like 10, 12 to 16 samples. And that's even more, more important if you don't like to play your drums in with you know, your fingers like on a, on a drum pad or, or your keys. Let's say you like to work with the pencil tool or the brush, right? Well, if you have 16 samples, it's really easy to forget what samples which. And you will get the same functionality if you just used an instance of Ultra B, but you won't get this easy to use and easy to navigate interface that we touched on in the previous point. All right, so the last point I want to touch on is using the Drum Machine Designer makes mixing your drum tracks a lot easier, a lot quicker. That's because it's using a multi-output track of Ultrabeat that it created for you, right? And once you save your template, it's all just set up. So we've already touched on this, right? I have my kick on this track, I have a hi-hat, and my snare. So if I wanna add compression, EQ, any effect, any third-party effect or third-party processing, I can do it all on a track-by-track -track level. And then I can obviously just close it. And then if I need to go, oh, I need to change my, my level of my snare, I don't have to go into a plugin like battery or machine, find the sample, the cell that's triggering the snare and turn that volume down. I can just do it on a track level. Now, obviously automation becomes really easy. Let's say you wanna automate hi-hat rolls or anything like that. It's all on its own track. So it's right there. Very, very easy to do. Now, finally, let's say you wanna add sidechain compression with your kick or your snare or to your kick or to your snare rather, right? Well, you can do that because it's on its own track. So you can just go find the track that you wanna apply the sidechain compression to, load up the compressor, and then navigate in your sidechain to say the kick. It's that easy. Now it makes mixing a lot more efficient. I think it makes programming and playing the drums a lot more efficient. And it's just got that tight integrated workflow with Logic. All right, guys, so that's gonna sum up our look at the best way to sequence drums inside of Logic. If you guys have any questions, comments, post those below. I'll get back to you as soon as I can. If you guys like this video and you wanna see more videos like it, please hit that subscribe button, it means a lot. And also hit that notification bell so you get an update when we release a new Fire tutorial. All right, guys, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time.